Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. Now the topic is relining and rebasing of the dentures. Relining and rebasing. Let's split out the word and we will understand what the definition says. Relining is defined as it is putting some lining material in between the tissue surface of the denture and the original tissue surface intraorally. Why is that required? We will come to that. Rebasing is process of replacing all the bases and the base material of the denture. So rebasing is completely change of the base and relining is adding some material into the tissue surface between the tissue surface of the denture and the mucosa. Now indications for relining and rebasing. Relining, when is it indicated? Now the patient which has taken over a placement of immediate denture just after the extraction that has to be replaced, relined that is after 3 to 4 months. So relining is important over there. Then after, if there is resorption of the ridge, relining is again important. If there is this base material that is the acrylic in the base has become discolored, then rebasing is important. Then if totally there is some breakage of the material that is acrylic, heat cure acrylic of the denture, again rebasing is important. Relining is important where in the cases where the tissues are abused a bit because of the over extended areas. So there is pinching in that particular region. So there is some tissue abuse. In those cases relining is important and adding of tissue conditioners are important in those cases basically. So these are the indications for relining and rebasing but before going to that you need to find out that there are some general considerations that you need to take in mind before proceeding for relining and rebasing of a particular denture. The first very important thing is the patient's oral health is all fine. If the patient is not maintaining the oral hygiene, of course our denture is not into fault and the denture doesn't require relining, rebasing, it rather requires a patient counseling of the doctor with the patient. Also, if the general health of the patient is going fine. If there is no problem of blood sugar level, which will again cause more resorption. So in those cases, we need to find out what is the general consideration in case of the patient. The next one which we are supposed to think of is, is the interocclusal distance fine? If the freeway space which we had given earlier in the denture is still there, is the teeth that we have given is grinded out due to over usage and at times because lower is a natural teeth, upper is a denture. So because of the different occlusal capacity, load bearing capacity of acrylic teeth and that of the natural teeth is different. So even wear of the natural teeth will of course wear of the acrylic teeth. So even those cases we need to find out and figure out relining and rebasing is important or not. So now coming to, we should always know before going ahead to some step, what are the places that we are not supposed to go? That is our contraindication, which is must to know as a dentist. So the contraindications for relining and rebasing, the very important is you are not supposed to do relining and rebasing and proceed further if the resorption is too much. If the resorption is too much, the distance between the bone which is resorbed now and that of the the intaglio surface of the denture, that is the tissue bearing surface of the denture will increase. How much relining will you do? How much effective it is? So the denture height will increase. So again, it will cause instability of the denture. Rather, we will go for a new denture. Again, if the tissue abused is orally totally in generalized condition, that means there is some fault in the denture or there might be some uh, inhabitants of fungi, so candida albicans can be there, so candidiasis into the denture happens, so candida associated dentures happen. So in those cases again relining, rebasing is not going to help, so that means the acrylic is leaching out, you need to change the acrylic base. Then where else we are not supposed to do a relining and rebasing if the denture is broken. If the denture is broken from outside, that is even from the cameo surface, the denture is broken, not only intaglio, 
then you need to go ahead with a new denture fabrication. Most important, if the denture fabrication itself is wrong, if there is any problem in the teeth, if there is any misarrangements in the teeth, or if there is any, any porosity present, that cannot be held on any porosity, a generalized porosity I'm talking about. So in those cases, again, we should not be going ahead with relining and rebasing. Before that, we need to also know that the, whether the relining and rebasing that we are going to do has to be followed only in open mouth technique or a closed mouth will also do. So relining and rebasing can be done in both open mouth as well as closed mouth technique. That is because in open mouth technique, what will happen is everything is in your control. You can do a control, so you can do a good border molding by trimming the denture which is already there with the help of green stick compound and then go ahead with the zinc oxide eugenol paste, wash impression or a light body wash impression. But in case of closed mouth technique as well, when you ask the patient to perform his or her activities by closing the mouth and performing itself by moving the tongue and everything. So what happens, the patient molds the particular denture uh, green stick that you have used for the border molding. So in those cases, the patient also happens to adapt to itself. So any of the method, whether it is open mouth or closed mouth is acceptable until and unless you know where the contraindication of relining and rebasing is. Now coming to rebasing, now rebasing may be necessary if the existing denture is totally discolored. So if the denture is discolored, you of course need to go ahead with the rebasing. If the denture has got n number of porosities, then you need to go for rebasing. If the denture color which has come out of the patient matching profile, that is a skin color, is not matching, you need to go ahead with the rebasing. Rebasing is required in the laboratory of the newly processed denture as well. At times you process the denture. Now when it came out of the acrylized chamber, you found there were some mistakes in the denture. You cannot afford to give that denture to the patient. You can go ahead with the rebasing and the immediately, which exhibits porosity, generalized porosity. Now there are three methods, the jig method, articulator method, and the rebasing techniques that we will see intraorally. Now rebasing with an articulator method, what we do in that, like for example, this is the denture. We will trim the borders of the denture. We will put green stick compound with open mouth technique or closed mouth technique. We will do a peripheral sealing. There is a border molding with the low fusing impression compound that is green stick compound. And then we will, with the help of asking the patient to occlude by itself with a zinc oxide eugenol paste or by light body, whatsoever you prefer, a wash impression is made and then that is to be adapted onto the cast. Is it? No. Now the wash impression that you have, now you will pour a new cast out of the denture that is in front of you, which has a border molding and a wash impression. Now the cast is being poured from the denture by boxing the denture, which is there and then the cast is poured. Now what we do? In take an articulator, mean value articulator supposedly and you put a chunk of plaster in the lower membrane. Like for example, whatever it is, a maxillary relining or a mandibular relining, doesn't matter. You put a chunk of plaster in the lower membrane of the articulator and now you have a cast in which the denture is attached. You are not supposed to remove that border molded denture from the cast that you have poured. With that cast and you make the indentation inside the chunk of plaster which you have poured in the lower membrane. Now you can see we have made an indentation with the help of the now before going ahead with the indentation if it is a maxillary uh, denture base uh, maxillary uh, denture earlier what they used to say is that you use a clay you take a clay and adapt that clay all over the palatal surface as well as the other surfaces other than the teeth reason for that is what happens is at times this plaster which is there it can also percolate inside the denture we do not want that. So what they used to say is put a clay which will support and guard totally into the areas from where plaster cannot get into it. Please. And then place it, have the indentation over the plaster, chunk plaster which we can see. Then pour some more stone or plaster onto the upper membrane above the cast to, and close the articulator and fix the articulator, put something because polymerization shrinkage happens and there can be, uh, it can increase out. So put something onto the articulator. 
Then now we will remove, you remove the T, now they have indentation. Now what you can do is, in that indentation, put back the T and you can do a wax up of the denture which is there. And that is how we will go ahead with the packing, flasking of the denture, then forward with the packing and the denture is ready. After actualization, you will remove and you will check for every other parts. Now, this was the articulator method of making and relining and rebasing. What else can we use for relining and rebasing intraorally? That is, chair side, we can use the soft liners which are present in today's commercial market. So, these soft liners are nothing but a kind of tissue conditioner or a cushioning effect which they give in between the denture and the mucosa. So, once you have an abused tissue, like for example, you have a little abused tissue, you do not want your denture to put pressure onto that particular abused part. So, what we will do? We will put a cushioning like of surface that is this soft liners that you will apply as a tissue conditioners and then you will mold the denture. Now you see, you mix the soft liners, you have powder and you have liquid, you mix the soft liners, then you pour it onto the intaglio surface of the denture and go ahead with the border molding of the denture. All the steps of border molding will be again followed with the help of soft liners. Now thing to remember is the soft liner sets very fast. So you need to border mold it very soon. Keep it in the mouth for two minutes and then put it back in a hot water. So now the surface which has come out has a lining that is a soft liner present in the intaglio surface which is border molded. And then we will check it in the patient's mouth. Now see this is the extension in the labial exactly area after relining it and this is the condition before relining. So we saw that we are increasing the labial flange area and that will increase the, improve the, increase the retention, improve the stability because now it has got a one-to-one -one contact with the mucosa and the denture. So relining and rebasing is hence required in these cases and this is the step how we go ahead with if it is a chair side then we have our soft liners which we can use and if it is in the lab we know the articulator method or the jig method also remains the same for relining and rebasing but for that and before that we also need to know where we are not supposed to go for relining and rebasing other than the fact yes of course if the patient says that patient doesn't have cost to buy another new denture then you have to again go for relining and rebasing. That is another also indication which we need to keep in mind. But contraindications for relining and rebasing will directly lead it to fabrication of a new denture, which is always better if the patient and the dentist agrees together. Thank you.